Hello friends. Now I'm sure all of you must have seen the Nabothian cysts uh, while performing first speculum examinations and looking at women's services. So let me show you an image here of the cervix that I took while performing colposcopy for a woman. And if I zoom on this area here, this is what I found. I found the cysts here on the periphery of the ectocervix. Now these are called as Nabothian cysts. Uh, this is a magnified image so that's why they're appearing larger. To the naked eye they were much smaller however you may have seen larger ones they can go to huge sizes as well. Now they're actually benign. Uh, they arise because of an underlying physiological uh, process. Now to understand why they form you need to have a very uh, a basic understanding of a concept which we call as metaplasia where one kind of epithelium, normal epithelium, transforms into another kind of normal epithelium, right? So now let's have a look at the image of the cervix here and just describe what we are seeing. Now this is the ectocervix here, we are seeing the um, external os here, okay? Now the squamous epithelium of the ectocervix is stratified squamous epithelium, right? And it looks bright, pink in color. Whereas the endocervical epithelium on the other hand is single layered columnar epithelium and it looks slightly redder. So what we are seeing here is the squamocolumnar junction. Okay. Now, during the reproductive lifespan of a woman, under the influence of hormones like estrogen, the endocervical epithelium pouts out. Okay, and this is what we call as ectropion or erosion. Now, over time, this uh, stratified squamous epithelium is going to replace the endocervical epithelium here by a process which we call as squamous metaplasia. And this is what we will get over time. This is where the new columnar junction will be. So if this is new, let's call this as old columnar junction. So this is where the old columnar junction must have been. And this is the zone where squamous metaplasia took place over time. And this is the zone that we call as the transformation zone on the ectocervix, right? Now, please understand here that this is a physiological process that keeps happening over and over again during the reproductive lifespan of a woman. Now, during this process of squamous metaplasia, sometimes Nabothian cysts can form at the location where the old columnar junction was. So somewhere in the periphery of the ectocervix and this is the columnar junction, okay, the new one. So why do these Nabothian cysts form? Now remember another very basic important anatomical point. The epithelium of the endocervix, the endocervical epithelium is thrown into clefts, okay, deeper clefts. So if you look at this histological image here and let's take this X and mark it here. Let's take this X and mark it here. So when the squamous epithelium is growing towards the inside here, the metaplasia is taking place. Squamous epithelium is replacing, is supposed to replace the endocervical epithelium. Sometimes what can happen is that the deeper areas of the cleft of endocervical epithelium here, columnar gland cells here, these deeper portions are not uh, transformed. They are not replaced. Moreover, when the squamous epithelium regrows, the opening of this cleft can get blocked. So these columnar glandular cells, they continue to produce mucin, right? And that mucin can get collected inside and it is going to be visible outside here on the ectocervix in the form of a nebothian cyst if mucus gets collected inside this cleft okay and this is what we see 
here in the form of the Nebothian cysts. So the Nebothian cysts actually mark your outside, the periphery of the uh, ectocervix where the old squamocolumnar junction must have been. So you realize that this is a completely physiological phenomenon.